Oh, I'm Debs and this is Debs Made This. Welcome. I am here with you today as part of Precious Fabric 24. So let's crack on. So you probably know about this challenge already, but in brief, we are asked to sew the things that make our hearts skip a beat when we look at them, let alone think about cutting into them. So that's our challenge to you this month. The challenge is arranged by Whitney of Tomcat Stitchery, and I shall link the launch video down below in the description box. Um, so let's crack on. What have you got that you clutch close to your chest and don't want to cut into? I'm going to show you five of mine today and share some plans that I have for them. Uh, so hopefully that will inspire you. So welcome if you're new here and also welcome if you're one of my regular viewers coming back. So the first fabric I have to show you is a Ruby Star Society cotton linen blend, a canvas fabric in this camellia uh, pattern, which I'm hoping we've not got very good light here today, but I'm hoping you're going to be able to see this. So it's typical canvas weight. Um, and I have had this since 2022. It was a pre-order, so I had to properly think about it before I ordered it. And what I didn't really think about was that this is narrow because it's Ruby Star. It's only 112 centimetres wide. So I didn't really think about the fact that this was narrow. I have two metres of this. Um, and my original plan had been some dungarees. I know that sounds slightly insane. But... Um, at the time I ordered it, I was very into my interesting dungarees. I'm less so now, so it's probably a really good thing that that's not what I made with it. My plan for these is a pair of oxbow pants. Now, you won't be able to see, but I have a pair on at the moment, and these have literally not been off my back since I made them this year, this summer. So this is a relatively new pattern from Sew House 7. Um, there's a really nice inspo image from Peggy, which is what made it. I like, just dropped everything, bought this pattern, printed it out. Um, and this will fit. I got my piece pattern pieces out yesterday and I can fit this canvas into a pair of oxbows. Um, there's a shorter, slightly flared leg and that which I think is version A, um, which is what I'm wearing and they fit onto there. I'm not sure that anything is stopping me now. So that's fabric number one. This is number two. Number two is a cotton lawn which I think came from Salvage and Bolts, which is a UK-based company, which often has slightly interesting fabrics. Um, you can see it's got really big sunflowers on it. And I don't know what it is about this. So I've got, I think I've got two metres, two and a half metres of this. Um, and it is fairly sheer. It's not really seasonally appropriate. But in my head, I want to make this into um, what I've got on, which is the Roscoe Bla Blouse by True Bias. I think the Wild and His Dog have made this and it is a really nice pattern and I like it because of the floatiness but obviously what I've made it in that I've got on is a viscose and this is a cotton lawn but I do still think it's got enough draper movement that it will be okay. I have in my plans a pair of this khaki coloured aisle jeans by Chalk and Notch and I think that that would just be quite a nice combination and I could layer it up with a little khaki turtle neck underneath maybe as it gets a bit cooler now this one for me epitomizes that nuance of precious fabric so it i don't think it was particularly expensive it's not groundbreaking in its in its design but there's something about it that just it's just perfection it's just so beautiful the print is lovely the colors are beautiful um and yeah, I don't want to make the wrong thing. Now, the good thing is, I think, as I say, I think I've got two and a half metres of this. So even if I've made a Roscoe, I'll probably have a little bit left to do something else with it if I really, really hated it. I mean, I'm not going to hate it, am I? So it's just, it's strange that I have such reticence about cutting into it. But there you go, fabric number two. So this is fabric number three. Now, this is a Nanny Eero cotton sateen in this lovely turquoise colour. And I think the print's called Lay Nanny. Um, I have had this since 2019. It was my birthday fabric in 2019. Um, and it is just stunning. It has, I it often doesn't show up very well on camera, but it has these kind of pearlescent detail in it, which just add a texture to it, which is just, just wonderful. I have this print in a couple of other bases. I think three other bases maybe. Um, but I'm not allowed to buy any more of it until I have sewn up what I already have. 
Let me know if you have a rule like that as well. So this was nearly a robe a couple of years ago. And then I made a robe, like a kind of throw on with your jeans kind of. And I didn't wear it, really. It's obviously just not something that I reach for. So this, I think, wants to be a dress. And what I have in mind at the moment is a Merchant to Mill Scout dress. Now, this is a relatively new pattern. It's essentially a trapeze shirt dress with a little pleat at the front and a pleat at the back. And it comes with a tie, but I don't think I'll have enough fabric to do the tie. Um, the... I'll put in a picture because I made the shirt version of this and I really liked it. Um, and what I don't know is if I can get it out of it. So I have three metres of this, but again, it's narrow. And then obviously, because it's nanny era, you have that really big selvage, um, which it's it's too short on the cross to cut it on the cross and incorporate that as this item. So that's that's my kind of hesitancy about it. But this deserves to be sewn up and worn. It can't sit in the cupboard. I mean, obviously, I do get it out and look at it in coo occasionally, but it can't sit in the cupboard forever, can it? Number four is this. Now, this is this year's birthday fabric. I think there is a bit of a theme. I think when it's birthday fabric, I tend to be a little bit more cautious about making something because I want to make the right thing. I want to do the fabric justice. Now, these are not really colours that I reach for, but this literally stopped me in my tracks. This came from System in Tarka, um, which is a UK fabric company where a lot of my precious fabrics have come from um, I'm showing you five today but there are probably about 20 that were auditioning to be in this video so I might have to do another like a part two with some of the other ones because um yeah my collection features many beautiful fabrics as I'm sure yours does so yes this is a Liberty Silk um I love how it's called Prospect Road. It's written on, so I don't forget. Um, and it tells you which way the top is, so you don't accidentally print it upside down. I just, yeah, I really like this. Now, this was originally, let me see what I said. Yeah, this was originally going to be a Pauline Alice Rainer blouse. Now, I have made one of these quite a long time ago. I think probably about 2018 or 2019. And it's been worn and worn and worn. That was done in an art gallery viscose. Um, so I could definitely make that. The other things that were in contention are the Avid Streams dress, the blouse, which I haven't made, and the Olivia blouse by Atelier Jupe, I think. Um, and I haven't made either of those. But again, it's a really similar thing. It's got an open neck and it's got um, a set in sleeve and it's got some gathers, really. I just I don't want anything too fussy because... Yeah, partly so I don't have to pattern match because I want to pattern match and I've only got a metre and a half of this and it was really expensive. And partly so that this print just sings, really. Um, so, yes, if you've got other ideas for this one, particularly, please let me know. And this is number five. Now, this is genuinely a one-off, which is why I'm slightly hesitant. Um, this is a Moons tweed. So Moons are a Yorkshire fabric manufacturer who've been around for a very long time. This tweed is apparel weight rather than furnishing weight. They do both. So it's before my um, Excel spreadsheet starts. So I think it's before 2018. So it might be 2017 or 2016 this. So it was originally going to be a blazer and a little shift pinafore dress and again I'm quite glad that I haven't made that because I'm not sure that that would still be something that I would reach for I mean maybe it would maybe a fitted blazer in a beautiful tweed is always going to be something that you would reach for in the last year I have obtained by Hand London Rumara I think they did they did like a series of payday patterns where you could get it kind of really cheaply so I'll put a picture in this comes in two versions and this is mostly why I haven't started twirling this quite like a bit of a bolder lapel shape I think not massive but also not quite so slim maybe but yeah I don't know so this one yeah I'm, I mean I'm at a standard now where I could quite happily I should be able to tailor this without a problem and again this is one that I always worry so it's been before you came it's triple wrapped in plastic and then vacuum packed because I'm so worried about the moths getting to it. Um, so, yes, I need to get on and get it, get it sewn up, don't I? But I think a coat might be the way forward for that one. You can see it's it's it does have a little bit of drape and movement, 
but it's got enough structure that I think will be fine for lapels and things. So yes, that beautiful. So that's the final of my five fabrics. So I hope you've enjoyed seeing the five precious fabrics that I've shared with you. What you'll see is me coming back and telling you what I've made with those fabrics. So if you subscribe and press the notification bell, you'll find out when that video happens. Um, I do go through the nuts and bolts of the competition. So obviously feel free to skip past this if you know already. One entry per sewist, drawn at random, worldwide entries. You tag with the hashtag PreciousFabric24 and tag Whitney at Tomcat Carmel, Tomcat Stitchery Carmel, I'll put it here, um, at some point during September when you post your make and it has to be a new make. I think that's it. So the, I'll put those, there's three kind of a one, two, three, and well, also put the vloggers that are before and after. So yesterday was So and Tell Australia. Today I'm sharing with Izzy at Dizzy Sews and Quilts, I think. And tomorrow it's Janine So at Janine Sews and Okira at the Island Socialist. So I hope you go and see what they've got to show you. And I hope that you manage to catch up with some of the lovely videos that have been happening this month. And I hope overall that we managed to inspire you to cut into that precious fabric, that heart stopping stuff, and get it into the garment and worn rather than sitting in the cupboard. So I shall say bye-bye for now. Um, thanks very much for coming to see me today. And I hope that you are finding time to rest and replenish and do some making if that's something that brings you joy. And I shall say bye-bye for now and God bless.